Welcome to our online information session. My name is Jesse Garlinghouse. I am the Director of Admission and Financial Aid at Heathwood Hall, and I am thrilled to be joined today by my colleagues Chris Hinchy, our head of school, and Suzanne Nakey. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves here in a moment, um, but again, I wanted to reiterate how thrilled I am you are here. I actually joined the Heathwood community six years ago. Um, I found Heathwood on a job search and um, really loved everything about this campus, the people I met here, and couldn't wait to grow as a professional here. And now that I have children of my own, I can't think of a better place for them to be raised. And so I'm also a first year parent at um, Heathwood. So that's an exciting um, part of my journey here as well. Chris, do you wanna introduce yourself? Well, yeah, Jesse, thanks. I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Inchy. I'm the head of school at Heathwood Hall. This is my 11th year at Heathwood and my ninth as the head of school. Uh, prior to coming to Heathwood, um, at, at years that now total 33 years in education, I worked at two boarding schools uh, where I served as a science teacher, teaching biology, earth science. Um, I also was a basketball, baseball, and cross-country coach, and also served as the dean of students and the dean of faculty. Um, and then I'm, I'm down here in Columbia and at Heathwood with my wife, Heather. We've been married 24 years. Uh, one of my boys graduated from Heathwood in 22, and I have a ninth grader and an 11th grader at Heathwood. And I'm also excited to be here. I, I've really been attracted by the, the kind of warmth of the community um, and have, have enjoyed uh, moving the school forward, You know, working with all the students and families and my, my 15 senior administrative colleagues, but it really has been a great journey. Uh, Suzanne. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're all here. My name is Suzanne Nagy, and I'm the Assistant Head of School for Advancement and Enrollment. And so I have the best job in town. I get to help advance the school by connecting different departments that are on campus. So admissions and development, marketing, alumni, parent engagement, I get to be part of all of the action. Um, I love Heathwood Hall. I definitely bleed plaid. I'm what we call a lifer. So I started here in the early childhood and finished in 1990. This is my 23rd year working at Heathwood. I've been a teacher, a division head, a coach, um, and now I get to work with the administration. My husband, Greg, and I have two children. Our son, John, just graduated last May and is off to college at Washington and Lee. And our daughter, Anna Reed, is in the 10th grade. So I'm delighted to be here. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you both. Um, so over the course of this hour, we are going to tell you a little bit about Heathwood, what makes it so special. We have a few videos planned so you can see it with your own eyes. Um, we will then get to the exciting part of the program, which is to welcome some current students and a recent alum so they can share a bit about their experience at Heathwood, tell you what they're up to now or what they're hoping to do soon. Um, and then we'll take some questions from our audience before we get to the last part, which is to um, tell you what your next step is, which we hope um, it is to bring you to campus um, by emailing to set up a tour. We wanna to explain the admission process, but really, again, just encourage you to come out and see it with your own eyes. Um, so Chris, I wanna start with you. As head of school, people ask you all the time from all over the world, um, tell us about Heathwood. So could you just give us just your brief overview before we um, hear it from our admission video? Yeah, I'll give you the uh, kind of elevator speech because normally I would go on for kind of many minutes, but I'll boil it down to kind of five things. One, um, we have a beautiful campus. I think it's unique. Uh, it allows students to be outside and move between classes. I know that you know, lots of research shows that being in natural green spaces is really important for learning. Um, we have a kind of student uh, faculty centered kind of relationship education where kind of knowing students is incredibly important, whether you're in the lowest grades and you have two teachers or even as you get into the upper grades and you have these small classrooms. Um, we're mission driven. I think Heathwood has always really looked at the kind of the whole child, this idea of learning inside and outside of the classroom, but also um, taking an interest in those areas, those areas of interest outside the classroom. And also obviously kind of collaborating with families is really important. Um, our, our academic program really is second to none. Uh, it is both rigorous and engaging. And, and the word rigorous can often be overused, but I think this idea of really encouraging curiosity um, and following the kind of interests of students in the lower grades. And as we move into the upper grades, obviously preparing them for college. Um, 
I also think safety is important, uh, both figuratively and literally. Um, we're a safe environment, literally. Uh, while we have close to 900 students, when you consider the amount of land we have with 122 acres um, and an SRO, uh, and the fact that we're a little bit removed from the city, at the same time, figuratively, we want students to feel kind of known and supported that they can kind of step out of their comfort zone and take what we would call kind of appropriate learning risks. And so there are a number of special things about Heathwood, but those might be my quick five. Thank you, Chris. So we're gonna to go to our first video so you can meet a couple parents, students, and see bits of campus with your own eyes. Well, I've been here for 15 years, and each year I've been so excited for the first day of school. The community at Heathwood really is different from any other community. It's so strong. It's been a joy to watch my two children really develop as people, not just with their academic careers, but with their athletic careers, with their enrichment activities, with all of the things that Heathwood uh, nourishes the whole child. So one of the things that we, we wish for as an outcome of a student at Heathwood is really to, you know, for them to recognize the best versions of themselves. We hope by putting them in an environment that challenges them, that supports them, that has adults that know them, through a partnership with parents, that students are able to leave here confident, happy, well-rounded, and kind of aware of their well-being. Heathwood has been very engaging and has allowed us many opportunities to get involved with the school while also giving our children lots of opportunities to be independent and pursue sports and their own interests. Right now I swim and it's really fun to be with a team and do everything with a team and kind of build that bond. I'm a part of multiple clubs and that's also something that's super important with Heathwood. It's just being involved and it doesn't take away from my learning but instead keeps me in the community. All of the teachers at Heathwood, it really seems like they care about my success in learning and doing well in their classes. They always offer extra help after school and they're always open to answering questions and encourage us to ask them. Our experience at Heathwood has been wonderful. For us to see that type of involvement or that type of commitment to our child, it made us you know, feel really special. When I think about great things at Heathwood, I think about commencement and oftentimes seeing some of these kids who have been with us maybe since they were three or 10 or maybe 15, to see the growth that they've undergone and connect those moments of challenge and success and failure and setback with advancement and to see that all come together at commencement as they move on to the next step. The experiences range everything from academic challenges to successes on the playing fields to relationships built with the teachers. And we've seen how that experience has translated into wonderful experiences in college. We have had the privilege of four of our children being here from nursery school and preschool all the way through. And now we've gotten to watch the journey beyond Heathwood. They've been prepared for college we feel like they've been prepared for the world through Heathwood. As a parent, you know, there's nothing more special than to know that you've given your kid everything that you can give them. And when I leave this planet, I want to know that I did everything I could for my kids. And knowing that I gave them the best education that I could possibly give them, I will rest a lot better. Fills that last part always. <laughs> Love those parents and those kids. Um, so we recognize that a lot of time it's hard to kind of follow along on all the special kind of exciting things at Heath with it without just knowing what time does school start and what time does it end. So we want to knock out some of those basic logistics for you with a little rundown that I like to call um, Heathwood 101. Um, so I'm going to start and then Suzanne will jump in. But we had, as Chris said, close to 900 students on campus and our campus serves kids from ages two through 12th grade. Um, so we have four distinct divisions. We have an early childhood program for our two, three, and four-year-olds. Our lower school is like an elementary school that serves kids kindergarten through fourth grade. For us, middle school starts in fifth grade. So our middle school runs fifth grade through eighth grade. And then our upper school, which others might call high school, our upper school serves kids ninth grade through 12th grade. 
So thank you, Jesse. Uh, for us, school begins in mid-August and we finish the year at the end of May. Um, we have summer programs that run about seven weeks during the summer. And we both have, uh, we have both um, Highlander Day Camp, which is all day childcare. And then we have specialty camp. So you can do a combination of both. And so that provides great fun and care for children over the summer. Uh, school for us in the early childhood and lower school starts at 820, but for middle and upper school, it starts at 810, and we end early childhood and lower school at three o'clock with carpool pickup, and then the rest of the students in middle and upper end at 305. We have extended care, what we call afternoon express for early childhood through lower school. And then the middle school aftercare program is called the Thought Studio. And that goes until six o'clock for all the students who need to stay. And some families don't use that service. Some take advantage of it sometimes and some take advantage of it every day. But it's a lot of fun and kids have a great time after school. They have a snack, they get their homework done, they get to play outside. So I like to think about it like all you have to do is give them a bath and supper and you're all set for bed. So I love that. Um, we have athletic teams that begin as early as the fifth grade. We also have an outdoor education program called PEAK that runs in the afternoon. They can kayak, canoe, bike, use the climbing elements that we have on campus. So there's a way to be outside and be involved in contributing to the community, but also having some fun. We serve lunch every day. It's a requirement for our students. It's a hot lunch. It is delicious. We have a chef on campus and the dining commons always has great choices. So lunch is easy. You don't have to worry about that. And you can also mark off worrying about uniforms and what your children might wear to school. Um, uniforms are required daily beginning in the kindergarten. Lots of the early childhood children wear them anyway, because they're fun. Um, but beginning in kindergarten through the 12th grade, we require daily uniforms. And Friday is Spirit Friday. So you get to wear your Heathwood t-shirts and spirit gear. It makes for a fun, festive Friday. Chris? Yeah, Suzanne and Jesse, that was a lot of great information. So I'm going to finish up with a couple more details. Um, in our early childhood, we had two teachers per classroom. And I think one of the things that's also interesting is that the, the early childhood division, uh, they really traverse the campus. You know, one of the favorite parts of my day is when I might kind of leave my office in the admissions area uh, and see the two-year-olds kind of coming up for library. Um, and so, you know, they're learning through exploration. Uh, they have not just kind of playtime, but also kind of specials, as we, as we would call them. Uh, the, the lower school students uh, have two teachers in their classroom also. Um, as they get to the higher parts of lower school, there might be some specialization of subjects. Um, they have a little bit of homework, but they are also kind of moving all over campus. And we, as Suzanne said, we see many of them here in the afternoon after school, but they have a school meeting. Uh, they're in the dining commons, they have chapel. As we move to the middle school, uh, the students have uh, subject specific teachers. Uh, they kind of manage a lot of their assignments through a learning management system online. Uh, they have advisors. So each year, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, they have a specific advisor uh, that is a point person for parents to kind of reach out to. Parents can also, though, reach out directly to teachers and administrators. And so we're kind of preparing them for that high school journey by getting them accustomed to these core specific classes, slowly kind of ramping up some of the expectations, but really embracing the idea of play uh, as they still have recess uh, and also chapel and middle schoolers can participate in athletics and arts, uh, which is a little bit different um, than you might see at a normal middle school. And as they move into the upper school, uh, we see students assigned to an advisor that they might have for four years. Uh, my oldest son who graduated had his advisor for four years and they still keep in touch. Twice a year, she reaches out via text. Uh, ob you know, obviously they have subject specific classes. Obviously the workload uh, increases dramatically. Um, they have chapel, they have a robust athletic and arts program, and they also have kind of extracurriculars. And, and later we'll talk a little bit about Winterham and senior exhibition, which are kind of significant capstones. But um, it's a different, the, the, the journey looks a little bit different in each division, but the focus on the children is the same uh, to help them uh, kind of manage their journey and, and end up on the other side of that journey ready for the next life. Jesse. 
Well said. Thank you, Chris. Um, Suzanne, you mentioned earlier, you are a lifer. You have <laughs> seen traditions over time and um, some of the things that really make this place so special. So could you talk a little bit about some of those traditions and just the special experiences our kids get to um, in, engage in? Absolutely. I think one of the best parts about being an adult on this campus is that we have so much space to move about and that the children get to see other students that are different ages. So when you have, you know, 18 year olds on the same campus as a two year old, those children and that whole spectrum of ages, they get to see other people in a different light and they get to contribute to a community that's important to everybody. And so I think the most important thing to take away is that Heathwood is about relationships and those relationships that teachers and students have and families have, that's what makes it special. And so as the adults on campus, we get to create these experiences and craft intentionally these moments for kids to interact with one another. For example, we start the school year with a, an event called Convocation. Um, we were founded in 1951 on September 10th. And so that first month that we're in school together, we gather as an entire community to have Eucharist and to celebrate the founding of the school and to begin our school year formally. And that's a really neat opportunity to share you know, um, a moment with students of all ages. We have book buddies that are cross-divisional. So we might pair an upper schooler with a lower schooler. We have lower school children that read to early childhood students. We have younger students that read to class pets. Um, all of those opportunities to practice skills and to learn and to do so in a joyful way when you might not even know that you're learning. Um, we have an all school sing along that we are starting to prepare for in Christmas time. We all gather in the gym. Santa Claus makes an appearance with his elves. We sing um, and we just have a great time together as we get ready for the holiday. I think to have younger students be able to look up to the older students and to have the older children remember that they need to behave in a certain way because people are watching and they want to emulate them is a great way to help build character, to build honorable people who take care of other people, whether they're younger or older, and to give our students a chance to learn respect for community and to be involved. Um, that's very important. Uh, one last thing before we talk about my favorite one, but peak outdoor programs. Um, our outdoor program has a group of student leaders called peak student leaders that are upper school students that help the younger children through the afternoon programs. And so when you can encourage a younger child to complete the Odyssey course or finish the Alpine Tower and they have great confidence, I love that uh, our older kids get to be the cheerleaders for the younger ones. I think my favorite all school tradition, though, is the Highlander games. My color team did not win last year, but I'm feeling a green team comeback this year. But the Highlander games is when we um, divide the entire school into three color teams, blue, green and white. We take a beautiful day in the spring and we play some games where we have all different grades mixed up together and we have music and we have popsicles and we have fun. And then there's a winner at the end It's some good natured competition. Um, but every team feels like they should have won. I'm not sure the points are calculated completely accurately, but I'm hoping for a green team win this year. But I know we have a video, um, I think, about the Highlander games. Yes. And Suzanne, since, um, you know, you and your green team, we're going to use one from the year they won. So okay, we'll thank cut you. to that one now. You can't imagine it till you see it.
just for you, Suzanne, just for you. Happy. <laughs> um, Chris, let's stay on the topic of healthy competition. Um, tell us about athletics at Heathwood. This was, I mentioned earlier, um, you know, athletics was really important to me. I played college basketball and, and coached kind of early in my career, uh, basketball. And so believe that, that athletics plays an important role at a school um, as you're a member of a team, uh, learning to push yourself, learning to deal with setbacks, um, also looking to pursue excellence. Uh, we have 23 sports programs. We have 40 teams. Um, we have 75% of our varsity coaches are kind of on campus, kind of embedded in the kind of regular programming at school. Uh, I know in the, the middle and the upper school, uh, 80 to 85% of our students participate on at least one sport. Um, and we find a way to, I think, balance this kind of high level pursuit of excellence. Uh, we have a number of students who have kind of moved on uh, to participate in athletics at the college level. Um, in a variety of sports, while at the same time encouraging participation. Um, this idea of being physically active, being a member of a team, kind of meeting commitments is also incredibly important. And we have 18 teams that are middle school teams. Uh, and increasingly, we, we have seen um, the kind of rosters on those teams increase dramatically. Um, and, and I believe uh, this is a great way for students to get engaged. And we have a thriving arts program also. Many of our students are engaged in the afternoon. Um, but our middle and upper school athletic program uh, is something that I'm incredibly proud of, proud because we, we're achieving excellence at the highest levels of varsity. And we also were able to expose our middle school students to exceptional coaches and really help them kind of see opportunities, uh, discover passions, and maybe find a talent that they were unaware of uh, in a particular sport, which I think um, I think really helps with their confidence and, and helps them in other areas of life also. Chris, that's helpful, thank you. Um, could you even touch on what it looks like in terms of lower school and engaging some of our younger Highlanders in some athletic opportunities? Yeah, and obviously many of you who, who, are, who are parents now, you remember playing sports at a really young age, right? Well before middle school. Uh, the, the, the PBL actually is right outside of our doorstep. And so we see some of our youngest students engaged athletically, but we have in our afternoon express program, some great kind of enrichment opportunities in a variety of sports, uh, soccer, basketball. We have a thriving program called Run Like a Highlander. Where we have 30 to 40 students who participate in kind of a really a fitness-based kind of exploratory um, exposure to running. Uh, you know, it, it's run by our, our assistant school chaplain and boys cross country coach, Jerry Catherine Sipes. Uh, she does an amazing job. We also have the mini cheer clinic. We have a number of ways in which we kind of engage students um, in, in, in activities at some of our largest games, like our football gatherings. And just yesterday, as I was kind of finishing up a book, I jumped on social media and saw that Coach Benatar uh, had just finished his basketball camp that had a number of our lower school students. So we really have a number of ways in which lower school students can be engaged in physical activity. And then they graduate to middle school when most of those things happen on campus, though some of those sports also happen off campus, sporting clays, equestrian, and swimming. Jesse. Thank you, Chris. Well, um, we're going to see our next video so we can see some of these things in action.
so fun to see kids as little as those mini cheerleaders uh, have time out there and um, yeah, such such great involvement. Um, so we've talked a lot about some of the extras and the specials and the traditions, but at the end of the day, we are a college prep school. Um, and so Suzanne, can you just talk about what is the meat of our program, our academics? Absolutely. So I think as parents, when we send our children to Heathwood, one of the things we want to make sure of is that they're academically ready for the next phase of their journey. And so we are a college preparatory school. So we are tasked with getting our students ready to attend the most wonderful and competitive colleges in the country. And we do a really good job, I think, of developing deep thinkers and developing people who find joy in learning so that they are prepared for college, but they're also prepared for what comes after college. We talk about graduating students that have a moral compass and a North Star, who feel capable and confident, who can advocate for themselves and have agency, and all of those things are foundational to being academically successful. Um, I said earlier, our academics are made richer through the relationships that teachers have with their students. Our teachers really know their kids well, and that's important because that means they know when to support them and when to push them when there might need to be a little challenge or maybe to pull back to say, we need to regroup a little bit and make sure you're getting what you need. Um, I love that we do that through our small class sizes. You might have an AP Latin class with six kids. You might have a freshman English class with 18. When you have a small class, you know your students well and have the chance to interact with them and to give feedback and writing and test prep and all of the things that go into the academic piece. Um, one thing I love about Heathwood is because we have that big wide range of ages, we really start with 12th grade and we work backwards with our curriculum to be intentional. We have a senior exhibition uh, project that is a year long research paper that all seniors are required to do. It's a topic of their choosing that they might be really passionate about or curious about. And they develop um, a paper, they research, they document, they have a group of people, a committee that's made up of an inside expert, a junior and an outside expert. And so that um, paper is then defended orally at the end of one senior year. And so that makes um, a great impression uh, for our families because the students learn to write really well, which is something Heathwood is known for. Now we take that and we want to have exhibitions of mastery all along the way. And we take it all the way down to the early childhood where they have habitats at Heathwood. You might be in a sixth grade class, they're doing a Roman museum. We want students to demonstrate their knowledge demonstrate their mastery and do so in a way that brings joy. And so I really feel like we are project-based and content-based, not just test-based, although we have to get them ready for things like the ACT and the SAT. And so we have a very nice balance in my mind of what it takes to be academically ready. Um, I know we have a video, I think, that goes into the senior exhibition a little bit more in detail. The senior exhibition at Heathwood Hall is a capstone project that all students must complete before graduation. The purpose of the senior exhibition at Heathwood Hall is to allow our seniors to really hone in on a subject that they are really interested in. During the senior exhibition process so far, I've learned that I can really do a lot more than I thought I could. The process is pretty daunting having to write a 15-page paper in a presentation but I've learned that if I take it step by step and use my resources with my teachers who are super supportive and my friends, I can really do a good job and I'm excited to see how it turns out. The senior exhibition is worth it for more than just the academic reasons. Students have to reach out to members of the community, they have outside experts, they have to schedule meetings, they have to interact with adults. These are skills that are just gonna be invaluable as they head off to college. So obviously we're focused on the end result, the college prep, the academics, but Chris, we also talk a lot about the journey. Can you talk just about Heathwood's approach to balancing the two? Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, there are a m number of things that excite me about Heathwood, but this is you know, one of the things that I kind of speak most passionately about. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier in my career, I was a coach and, and, and John Wooden was one of the coaches that I was most interested in. And as one of the most winning basketball coaches, he was focused on getting better every day. And I think at Heathwood, we see this value in kind of steady improvement, uh, which allows us uh, to work with a wide range of students and really focus on the experience that they're having here. So, you know, relationships with adults is a part of that experience, which we know prepares students to get more out of college by being able to kind of seek extra help out and form relationships with professors. Uh, obviously, many of us know that networking is important later. This idea of curiosity um, and kind of enjoying the process of learning. Um, the idea of kind of understanding that while school measures a, a number of important kind of aptitudes in a student, there are a number of aptitudes that aren't always measured in school and become vitally important later in life. Uh, creativity, interpersonal skills, impulsivity and risk-taking, right, which is sometimes frowned upon in school. This idea of helping students see their light, helping them feel comfortable in an environment, kind of a learning community, I think is another way for students to better deal with the setbacks that are associated with the normal progression of one's life. Uh, you are going to have small failures that lead to massive successes. Uh, Suzanne mentioned the senior exhibition. We also have this great Winterum program, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But the idea of experiencing, um, I can tell you that one of the proudest moments, when I was the most proud of Heath, one of those moments, was when my wife and I watched my son present his senior exhibition on migraines. Um, and for someone who was shy and a little reticent and not necessarily someone who was going to be a carnival barker, um, to see him get up and give a 20 minute presentation, to see the bond that he had forged with his advisor who like cared deeply about his growth, um, the journey is important. I would put our results up against anybody. Please look at our college list online, go out and get the Columbia Metro magazine and look at the list of places we've, we've had. We have 66 students at USC but we also have five at Yale right now. Um, we have students all over the country. Uh, I was just with a family the other day. We have four students uh, up at Wake Forest. His daughter is there and she was back for break and both of them were raving about how well prepared. So I want them to be prepared. I want them to have a variety of opportunities in front of them, but the journey, those 10, 12, five years, that's where humans are made. And that's what Heathwood specializes in. Uh, and that's what I'm most proud of. And that's why I love working here. Thank you, Chris. Well said. Well, you've probably noticed we've had a couple folks log in. So I'd like to invite um, Gabe, JB, and Cherry to go ahead and um, unmute themselves. Show us um, your faces. Um, your faces. Welcome. 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 This is the best part of the program because we get to hear from hear some from of our, our current, current students. students. Um, um, JB and, and Cherry. Cherry. And, and one of our recent alumni. Okay, welcome. welcome. You look I like think Jesse, you need to make sure that on, um, on fall break. Fall break. <laughs> so, yes, I'm glad you could join us. Join us. Um, um, so, I will I go ahead and have you all um, um, mute, mute your mics mute until you're speaking, just so we can eliminate some of the feedback. Um, but I would love for you all to just um, introduce yourselves, tell us how long you've been at Heathwood, um, and we'll start with you, Cherry. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Cherry, and I am an international student from China, and I've been in Heathwood since eighth grade, and I'm not now a senior. Thank you. JV, why don't you go ahead? Um, hey, everybody. My name is JV Belk, and um, I have been at Heathwood Hall since 2009, so since I was three years old. And I'm also a senior. Thank you. And then, um, Gabe, tell us how long you were here and what you're doing these days. Hello, everyone. My name is Gabe Cooper. I was at Heathwood since first grade, so I've been there. For, I was there for a really long time. I loved my time there. Um, and now I'm currently a freshman at Duke University. Thank you, Suzanne. I love seeing your faces. Good morning. Um, I am going to ask JB to go first, and then I'm going to ask Cherry to follow JB. Um, as you finish the first quarter of your last year at Heathwood, can you tell us what you think 
have um, been your greatest contributions to our community? I can think of lots, but I want to hear from you. What's your greatest contribution to Heathwood? That's a, that's a difficult question. I think, well, the one that I'm most proud of is just that I feel like I bring a very positive attitude to everything I do. And I, you'll never see me without a smile on my face. You'll never see me like down or anything like that. I really, I really try to stay positive. I smile a lot. I just try to make everybody that I come across on this campus feel welcome by my, by my presence. And um, I kind of pride myself on the fact that like a lot of people like they have they have rough days. And if I if I can make one person's day a little bit better, then I think I've done I think I've done my school justice. I think my biggest contribution is just try to like be a good student and a good person in general. Um, I think I try to like set a lot of goals for myself, including like college applications, academically and also athletic and theater. And I think treating everybody in the community well and with kind and gratefulness is it's like, it's basically what everyone in people try to do. Thank you. Chris, I know you have a question for Gabe. Hey, buddy. Yeah, so Gabe, th this question's for you. You're a couple hundred miles north in Durham, though you're home right now. Um, and I think, you know, a question that a lot of parents have, we often talk about how well we think people are prepared for their next step. But you're now there, you're at a, a very competitive uh, university. Uh, I'm sure you're thriving, you're thriving here. You know, what have your observations been since you've been there about how Heathwood prepared you for this next step? Yeah, so I was at Heathwood for a while and I learned a lot and college is definitely, at least this first semester has been challenging, but Heathwood prepared me and Heathwood prepared me to be ready for that challenge. At Heathwood, I did many things. I did sports, I did student government, I did clubs, I did academics. I tried to have a social life. And at Duke, there definitely is that social academic balance still that I need to figure out. And Heathwood helped me prepare um, with learning how to deal with that balance. How do I, you know, balance my schoolwork and balance like when I was friends to a football game? And I feel like Heathwood prepared me the best possible way to do that and also to um, better form relationships with my current professors. Because most people that are um, in my grade, in my class, or even at Duke, aren't from a small school environment that Heathwood tends to, that Heathwood has as its great community where it's important to establish relationships with your teachers. Thanks, Gabe. Um, so this question is gonna be for all three of you, but I'm gonna just explain a little bit what the question is, mostly for the people who are watching. Uh, so we have a program called Winterum, uh, which usually happens on the first week of March, uh, where we suspend classes in the upper school and students can either do an internship, uh, they can take an intensive class on campus or they can travel. Uh, sometimes that travel is domestic and sometimes it's international. Um, it really is this idea of kind of uh, experience in the world uh, and kind of learning through that experience. So my question to each of the three of you and, and uh, JB, we'll go to you first. Um, is you talk about your best winter room experience and what was it about that experience that that, that made it so good? Um, I was um, fortunate enough to be able to um, have an internship my junior year, so last year with Watch Fox. Um, I did it with Amanda Poole and the Watch Fox um, sports um, broadcasting team. And it was just a really great like experience for me for someone who wants to do journalism and sports broadcasting when I eventually go off to college. I think it was just the perfect amount of experience that I needed to gain an understanding about what I like what I was doing. Like I would go, Amanda and I, we would go to like a softball game and we would talk about the game on the microphone. It was really, really cool. And we would like watch the game. Like I, I, I watch sports all the time, but now I could eventually get paid to do it and also talk about it. I mean, it was just an incredible experience. And I'm looking forward to one this year. I'm really excited for this year, but that, but so far that has been like the staple, one of the staples of my uh, Heathwood High School career. Great, thanks, Great, thanks JP. JP. Okay, Cherry. Um, I went to New Hampshire's last year, but I did an internship in my sophomore year. I actually found out 
so my dream has always been to be a fashion designer but la uh, when I interned with this um in like independent studio like fashion designer I actually found out that I might not want to be a fashion designer in the future because it's a totally entirely different experience than I than what I expected than what's like out there and like portrayed as and it's it's actually a very very hard job and like it requires a balance of your entrepreneurship and your creativeness and I don't it's it's more of a business than like a designer job so I think that was like a a very good experience that I had and I found out just that I just want to be an artist not in not a fashion designer Jerry, Terry, can I I'm sorry oh, can ahead. I just ask you to elaborate on the New Hampshire trip because that was one yeah. I followed very closely it was so cool I would love to just hear you talk about what you did there so New Hampshire, we went to, um, we went ice climbing and we went uh, skiing and we went, try to summit the um, Mount Washington, which is like one of the highest uh, mountain in New Hampshire. Um, and it was a very physically challenging course to me since, um, and uh, it's just a great experience with all the bondings with like my friends there's like no no service on the mountains there's always like snows when you would always like snow fight and all that so it was a really fun experience great thanks cherry so gabe your turn to talk about your best winter room experience oh there's so many um but my most memorable would definitely have to be my senior year trip. I was lucky enough to go with Madame Keller, and Mr. Blackstone, um, two of my favorite teachers, um, to France for a week where we stayed with the host family and were completely immersed, immersed in French culture and French cuisine and um, just everything French. And I learned throughout the trip that perhaps my French isn't as great as I thought it was. As I thought it was. <laughs> um, I got to order things in French. They responded to me in English. But seeing a completely different culture and living in an area completely different than myself, it made me appreciate where I'm from even more. Um, I love France. I definitely want to go back, but also I'm very proud of where I'm from and be able to explain like things about Heathwood, uh, like my high school experience, and I'll carry those memories with me for the rest of my life. Thank you all. Um, so Cherry and JB, you are at the end of your Heathwood journey as seniors and Gabe, um, you are actually back in town. And so um, for all of you, I think um, I would just love to hear who, when you think about yourselves, maybe several years beyond being a student here, what teacher would you be most excited to come visit and why? And um, Cherry, we can start with you this time. Um, I have a couple, and uh, they're Mr. Peak, my art teacher, and uh, Miss Grove, my like personal, I don't know, like counselor kind of, and then um, also Miss Fry, my college counselor. Um, starting with Mr. Peak because I, I'm in this program called Vis Visual Art Concentration, so I have him every year, and I do art all the time, and he's more like a personal friend to me than a teacher I think and he helped me find my um, outside expert for senior exhibition too so um, that's there uh, and then um, Miss Grove just helped me like I had a really tough year um, going from sophomore year to junior year and then um, she just guide give me a lot of guidance for like for my personal life and academically. And then um, Mrs. Fry, she's like my school mother, <laughs> kind of. And then she just gives me a lot of support emotionally and with the aspect of um, college app app applicating, app applying. Yeah, applying. Um, and I'm really grateful of that I'm, that I'm here in Heathwood and such a great community and supportive community that he could has. 
Terry. JB, can you share your teacher teachers? Um, I this is a tough question, I won't lie. Um I had two. Um Dr. Plowden, my um AP literature teacher, um, she is probably, not probably, she is the nicest woman you will ever meet in your entire life. She is, she is heaven sent. Um, she's like a mother to all of us. And she just, she and I had a connection where like, I, could, I felt free to write and talk about anything. And she would obviously criticize it because she's a teacher, but she'd give you feedback that wasn't that was just like, it felt like there was more to it than just criticism or feedback. It was more like, more love into it and more of like her mind and her soul because she really cares about the school and her students. Um, and then the second teacher I would come back and see is Miss Thorne. She has been my teacher for the past two years now. And we, that is, that, that, that she's my best friend. Um, we talk about everything together, different skills, science, sports, just, life in general, like that is, that is one of my best friends. And she has been a blessing in my life and my family's life because she taught my brother as well. So she's really close to the, to the family and she just means the world to me. She really is one of the nicest people I've ever met and she's really like one of my best, my best friends. Thank you, JB. And then Gabe. Yeah, so this is actually a funny question because I'm going to go to Heathrow today and see all these people. Um, after my first couple of weeks here at Duke. Uh, firstly, be Mr. Blackstone. He was my football coach, my advisor, and my math teacher um, throughout my whole time in high school. And he taught me so many lessons, not just in math and football, but also for life. And having gone in through my first couple of weeks at Duke, I've really gotten to experience like how great of a person he is through like what he taught me. Also, Madam Keller, she's who I went on my French one room trip with. And I'm actually in a French class right now. And I'm like, gosh, she really was a great teacher because this one right now is pretty rough. <laughs> like, she was definitely nicer than she um, um, needed to be. Uh, Madam Keller is so sweet. And also, Dr. Plowd, and like JB said, she really is a great role model and she's so kind. I met with her multiple times during the summer before college where we just sat down and talked about books like The Great Gatsby. And, who I want to be in the future. And it's those deep conversations with these teachers that I haven't really had at Duke because the Heath was such, such a great community. And I loved my time there. And I sometimes wish I, I could be back at uh, be back at Heathwood, but I loved it. Gabe, you're welcome back anytime. And JB and Cherry too. This is always your home. We love seeing alumni. So you all just remember that as you go off to exciting and impressive places. You've always got a home here. Um, we'll let you all run to lunch because I know um, it's that time, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, and um, Chris and Suzanne, uh, let's get to a couple of questions before I outline the admission process for our guests. Thank you. Jesse, I have gotten a question and I'm gonna ask this of Chris. Chris, could you talk a little bit about what does it mean to be an Episcopal school? Thanks, Suzanne. I'm still thinking about all those answers those kids gave. Uh, I mean, talk about a testament to the faculty. Um, so a couple of things. One, from a nuts and bolts standpoint, being an Episcopal school, each division has chapel once a week. And so we have two chaplains. Um, you know, right now we're expanding our chapel. Um, from 300 to 425 seats with two classrooms and we're expanding our outdoor chapel. So we're kind of displaced and chapel is in a number of different locations on campus, but students still have it once a week as a division. Um, and so that's a great, I would say communal gathering. It's also a chance to just pause, take a deep breath, uh, sometimes ask bigger questions uh, about bigger truths. Um, it's also a chance for the chaplain to connect um, the gospel to the homily, which they often try to connect to make it age appropriate into the lives of our students. Um, another nuts and bolts in the middle and the upper school, um, we have classes, kind of religious classes. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle school, they're much more introductory. And as we get to the upper school, I'd say they're really modeled after a college curriculum where you, know, you may have comparative religions or you may have a, a New Testament or Old Testament survey class or a kind of ethics class, really kind of decision-making, this idea of kind of being introspective about religion and asking questions from a kind of a, a, a meta standpoint about the actual religion and the experience. Um, 
from a from a more philosophical standpoint, I, I was at an Episcopal school before I came uh, to, to Heathwood. It was a boys boarding school called Salisbury. And I felt as if, and I feel it here, as if this idea of seeing grace and dignity in others, you know, really informs the way we view a child's journey. Um, I think there, there could be a misconception or maybe it's a hope of parents, right? When you first have children that their journey is gonna be linear. Um, and I think as you gain, as, as your kids get older, you realize that it, it, it vacillates, right? It, it, there, there are some setbacks and there are wild successes where you really, could I feel any better about this, what this person's experiencing? But I think for, for us as, as, as educators, you just heard, right, the, the, just heard that the students talking about the relationships they have with faculty, that the faculty kind of see them as people and want to talk to them about sometimes intellectual endeavors, the great Gatsby. Uh, I love Dr. Plowden. Talking about the great Gatsby would not be how I would find great pleasure. But she is one of the nicest people I know. And, and I think the students know that the, the teachers are rooting for them. And I think some of that is grounded in our Episcopal tradition, our, our Episcopal heritage, this idea of seeing grace and dignity, seeing light in others and trying to help them realize what that light is, right? You look back to your childhood, you're searching for that light, you're not sure what it is. Uh, and I think to be in an environment like this helps you find it. The last piece is service to others. I think we're always thinking, you know, the golden rule, uh, treat others as, as you'd wanna be treated. Uh, and serve others who are less fortunate. Obviously, we're very fortunate at Heathwood, and so we're always looking for ways uh, to provide service to others, which is what research is showing where you get a tremendous amount of gratitude and happiness and actually health uh, from the idea of serving others. So those would be just a couple things that I think are connected to our Episcopal heritage, Suzanne. Thank you. So um, here's a question that has come in for us. Um, this is a question I have as I'm tuning into the online information session. How is diversity valued and demonstrated in the lower and upper schools? The lower and upper schools. So I would say, you know, diversity is demonstrated in all four divisions, uh, not just those two. Um, I think one of the ways that we look at diversity is kind of student percentages, uh, right? From a numerical standpoint, you're trying to see diversity. Uh, because I think when students are able to see diversity, and obviously one of the ways you might see it is through kind of a racial or, or nationality spectrum. Obviously, there's religious diversity, there's socioeconomic diversity. Uh, we're also looking to have gender balance. Um, I think in the lower school, I think we don't necessarily always address it head on, right? At that point, students are more concrete thinkers. Uh, they're less um, kind of perceptive analytically. As we move into the middle school, we begin to have kind of more, more, more prudent conversations about different experiences that people might have, different perspectives. But we've also had a huge focus on um, having diversity on our board of trustees, having diversity in our faculty. We've been very successful in the lower school uh, and having great diversity in our administrative team and our faculty. Um, and in the middle school and the upper school, we've also seen increases in diversity of the adults in the community which is one of the ways that our students, because we have focus groups with, with parents and focus groups with students, the student focus groups are more centered on the upper school. Their feedback is, is seeing faculty and adults, administrators, who they have something in common with. Uh, and that could be kind of a measure of diversity. And so, you know, I think we are doing a great job. I think in the Columbia market, we are doing an exceptional job. I think we always have room for improvement. And so this is an area where we're constantly reflecting uh, on achieving kind of a better representation of diversity and having voices that better represent different experiences. Thank you. All right, we have time for one last question. Chris, you alluded to the idea that we have um, literal and figurative safety. Could you talk a little bit about the safety of the campus and what we do to make certain that the students are able to learn free of worry? So, I'll, so, this, is, so this question is more about literal safety. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk yes. about that. So when you come to our campus, uh, there'll be a security guard at the front gate. Um, we, that, that security guard is here 
almost all the time. I mean, our, our front gate security is here almost 24 seven now. Obviously there are some exceptions over maybe a long Christmas break. Uh, so we control that traffic. We have a system for greeting visitors, uh, whether the front gate has been alerted to their arrival, visitor passes uh, that then allow them to kind of be known and identified on campus as we, we move from one area to the other. Uh, we have a Richland County uh, kind of deputy on campus, Josh Albans, who serves as a physical presence during the school day and the summer. Uh, he just recently added him to our summer programs, um, but he also is a huge source of kind of wisdom and experience. Uh, we use him to guide our drilling. And as we, we make uh, kind of improvements to our processes, uh, Josh and the kind of reservoir of information that obviously the agency he works for has. Um, Richland County has, the SWAT team has done drills on our campus as a way to make us more aware of kind of pluses and minuses, but also to help us drill better and to familiarize themselves to improve response time. Um, we have added window coverings and locks. We have a cell phone based alert system called Stop It that more recently was called Punch Alert, but there was a, they were sold over the summer. So the name is called Stop It Now um, that allows us to, to be alerted instantly. And we're always practicing fire drills, evacuation, uh, reunification, uh, whether it's tornadoes. Uh, we also have two school nurses. Uh, we find that the, the majority of safety is the everyday stuff, uh, allergies, bumps and bruises, cuts. Um, we have three counselors, one in each division. And we also know that one of the ways that schools are most safe is by knowing their students and knowing their families. And so we have, you know, 885 students, we have about 550 families and kind of knowing those students and families, knowing when a student may seem off, uh, usually the, the, the biggest measurement of, of when uh, danger might be happening is when students are disconnected. Um, and it's really hard to be disconnected here through the advisory program, the two teachers, uh, the administrators who are kind of omnipresent in each division and who are available via a phone call uh, to hear from you as a family about a concern you might have about a student or a concern about your child who, who, who seems to be at the moment, uh, you know, kind of trying to find their way. And so I feel we are incredibly safe from the standpoint of knowing children. And then there are kind of physical impediments. We're also about six miles outside of the city. Uh, we're at the end of South Beltline. Uh, you take her right off a bluff drive past the PBL and, and there's Heathwood. And so we are really able to control kind of who's here, even though we have a, a large campus, uh, but we're also in multiple buildings. So we have 23 buildings. And so as opposed to being in just one building, uh, there is a plus and a minus to having a wide open campus like that. Um, and we feel as if it's a, a plus to not have every student in one building and to have them kind of spread out so widely. So we have made a lot of improvements. Uh, just next week on Thursday, we're having a town hall. So we're also frequently communicating with our families uh, to both answer questions and solicit feedback about how we can improve that which we're doing. Thank you, Chris. If you had a question um, that we either didn't have time for or you didn't have time to send it in, please go ahead and still send it. Um, that is just our, our team's email address. Um, it's also the email address we use to schedule tours. So that um, leads me into your next steps as an audience viewer. We really hope you will just come out, um, see our campus with your own eyes, see how your child and your family um, might belong here and um, how your child would really thrive here. So our admission process typically starts with a tour. Our applications are open online. Um, there's a little button that says, um, click here to apply. Um, that's really the first official step of the application process. Depending on your child's um, age, they might come in for a play visit or a shadow day um, in their current grade level. We'll collect things like teacher recommendations and um, transcripts and that kind of stuff um, just to make sure that it is a great fit um, and again that your child would thrive. Um, we hope you've enjoyed your time with us. Um, we hope to meet you soon. And as just a final video for you to see more of Heathwood and more people of Heathwood, um, we have a little um, final video to hope you say yes to coming to visit and applying. Thanks for being here. And thanks to our tech team and my lovely colleagues and our students for making today possible.